Yes, ma'am. Yes. 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 No, I don't think, by the way, I don't think that that picture represents a threat to me. It, some, it seems to me it just trivializes Muslims. That's all they ever do, that's all they are. You don't see them building. You don't see all of the 17 full-time Muslim schools. You don't see all of the businesses and things like that. But you always see them as if they're just one-minded, just on that, everything, that's all it is. They're down, they're, they're down there praying. I don't think that that picture represents a threat. By the way, the, my real conclusion was that the threat is not the prayer nor the fasting. But to me, the threat is the political and economic implications of Muslims. So that if the Muslims became a real uh, a strength in this country, how will that impact upon domestic and foreign policy of the United States government? Absolutely. Uh, the fear is that if the, if the Muslims become united in, in this country, that they could change the policy of this government in, in ways that some interest groups wouldn't want it. For instance, if the Muslims who pay millions of dollars of taxes in this country decided that they wanted the tax money not to be sent here, spent here, but spent there, and they became politically active like that, they would represent a a strong threat to a lot of people, or to some people, to some segments of the, of the community, for sure. That's the threat. And, and these people would, would make, it, make the masses of the people think that, that the Muslims are a threat to them, but they're not a threat to them. You know? And this is a very highly competitive country that we live in. And as you know, in every industry, they have the competition. And some people think that they have to compete against the Muslims. I'm simply saying that Islam didn't come to compete, but to fulfill to finish, and that's why I said that if the Christians and the Jews understood the implication of Islam, then they would embrace it, that it is nothing more than a continuation of the same religion that their prophets brought, even though now we have called it different names. Because we believe that all the prophets had the same one religion, that God didn't have 10, 15 different religions. God had one religion. One religion, and all the prophets brought the same religion. Sometimes the details of the prayer and fasting may be a little bit different. For instance, Allah says in Quran, Kutiba alaykum musiyam kama kutiba ala the dinim kablikum. Fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those who came before you. So, all the things that we do prayer, Christians and Jews pray. Fast, Christians and Jews fast. The details differ. And we believe, Al yom akmaltu lakum dinakum, that Allah has perfected the religion now. That all through the time, that the religion was being built and it was perfectly except for one brick. And that Muhammad completed what all the prophets started. And the difference between Prophet Muhammad and all the other prophets, every prophet said, Musa li qawmihi. When Moses said to his people, Isa ibn Maryam, ya bani Israel, inni Rasulullah ilaykum. And when Jesus said, O oh, children of Israel, I am a prophet to you. But in the Quran, Allah says, Kul ya nas. Inni Rasulullah ilaykum jami'a. Allah said, O oh, Muhammad, tell the people, I am a messenger of Allah for all of you. And so we believe that Muhammad represents for the first time a universal prophet for all of the people in this time as well as his time. So, so what I'm saying basically, the threat is the political and economic implication what would it mean when all those Muslims unite in this country? How would it impact upon our country financially? See, for instance, I'm on a, I'm on a mission in New York City, and, and it, listen, it's our secret, right? It's our secret. Keep it here in Orlando. I'm trying to get every Muslim in New York City, those thousands of Muslim businesses, to encourage them to not put in their store anything that would be detrimental to the people. For instance, I'm encouraging every Muslim uh, uh, um, newsstand in America not to carry any pornography. Can't make them. It's a free country. I can encourage them. I'm trying to encourage every Muslim business have no alcohol in their store. I can't make them. Will they lose money? Sure they would. 
But they will show the people that I'm not trying to make money. Because according to our religion, in the law ta'ala ta'ibun, la yaqbalu illa ta'iba. God is good and he only accepts that which is good. In our religion, alcohol is prohibited. We can't drink it and we can't sell it. So I don't want them to come here to America and sell it to make money. And they know in their religion they can't sell it. Muslim can't sell pork. Muslim can't eat it, can't sell it. So I'm encouraging every Muslim, first with New York City, don't sell any pork. Sounds good? All right, that's what we're going to do. In New York. We're going to start in New York City, then we come into Orlando. <laughs> Anything else?